everyone, it's Cat with Wandering Soup, and we are back with our weekly vlog series on moving abroad from the U.S. of A. For those who follow and those who don't, we offer a weekly quick down and dirty tutorial on moving abroad. And in that vlog, or in this vlog as well, we're going to cover land and business ownership, citizenship, medical, healthcare, education, if you have kids, uh, and LGBTQ rights. Again, this is general quick down and dirty you do need to do your own research do not jump based off what i'm saying this is to start you on the pathway and to get you to where you may want to be that's my work job and i do it well so with that being said um this week we're moving to mexico and that's mexico just in case you didn't understand my spanish which is possible but anyway let's start out with land ownership it's a little tricky surprisingly you can't own land in Mexico but up until recently and by recently I mean 1993 you can only own land in certain restricted areas and this was a way basically to keep control of the land in the locals hands and not to um, basically have it taken over by outside interests which happens in almost every country essentially um, but in 1993, the law was changed, and you can own land in restricted areas. And by restricted, I mean your beaches, um, I think uh, historical areas, and things of that nature. So now you can own it, but you have to go through a few more steps, and there's banks involved, and you have to have a trust. There's different things. So keep that in mind if you want to own land that's outside of, say, a home, and of course, on the beach. Next thing up is business ownership. Can you own land? I'm sorry, can you run a business in Mexico without being a citizen? You can. Uh, and actually, Mexico is one of the easiest countries in Latin America to own and operate a business and to walk in the door and open up a business. Uh, look at all the rules and regulations and things, how much it may cost you. Again, that's going to be up to you. But if you have an idea, this may be the country for you to get that jumped off. Citizenship. Mexico is very similar to other countries in that it takes five years of uh, what I like to say, boot on the ground. I'm ex military if you didn't know. So, boot on the ground, you got to be in the country for at least five years before you can apply for permanent residency. And from there, you can achieve citizenship. So, again, sit still for five years or marry a national. Your choice. I, I just do five years. Just. You know, that's just me, though. So, and uh, even if you marry a national or native, you still got to wait two years. So, two to five years. Anyway, oh, just an extra. I forgot about this. I thought this was really interesting. Um, to become a citizenship citizen, you have to take a test. You have to have basic knowledge of Spanish. Uh, and you have to know the history and the culture. What that means is, don't move to Mexico and live in an expat bubble. What you want to do is actually live there. Shop, have friends, learn where you're at. Um, get immersed. Just that simple. And why not if you're looking for citizenship? This should be something that's sort of self-explanatory. But if it's not, check out our video on expat bubbles. I'll link it above. And medical, which is always important, Mexico actually has really good medical. It's cheaper than in the U.S. Uh, if you're a citizen. If you're not, we recommend medical insurance or health insurance. Go through a nationally recognized country, I mean company. You shouldn't have any problems. Probably looking at around 300 bucks extra a month. So keep that in mind when you're budgeting. You can also pay out of pocket. A typical visit, based off some information I've found and watching other expat videos, is about $20 to $30 a visit. Um, pretty interesting in the sense also that HIPAA laws aren't really applicable in Mexico. And let's say you want to get x-rays. What you do is you go to the clinic, get your x-rays or to the wherever they're doing the x-rays at, and then they hand you your x-rays and then you take them to your doctor's office. They interpret them and you keep them. And you may pay 20 bucks for that as well. And then another 20 bucks for your doctor's visit. 
Medication is pretty cheap. So it's up to you. You can pay health insurance, make sure you, and then you're gonna be probably in the upper echelon of the medical care, or you can pay out of pocket and still do okay. Once you become a citizen, you'll be part of the healthcare system there. And I think that is about, I wanna say maybe 500 for the year. That's for the year. Education is free and mandatory for those ages 6 to 16. So if you have children, this will apply for you. But you can also homeschool. Now, for if you want to put them in school, make sure that you, of course, choose a bilingual school unless your kids speak Spanish flu fluently. You won't have an issue. Um, and it's going to cost you if you're outside of the... Um, public education system, which more likely you will be since you're not a citizen and your kid's not a citizen, though your visas may pivot you in a different direction in this regard. So you can't live there obviously on a tourist visa, though you can stay there for up to six months without paying anything, and that's because you're a U.S. citizen going into Mexico. So keep that in mind as well. And this is a great opportunity to go and check it out, I think, because of that six-month visa. You can go to Mexico, maybe go to the city that you want to live in, Mexico City, Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, Merida, any of those places. Check it out. See if this is what you want to do before you make that leap. Now, once you make that leap, then you're going to be looking into different tourist visas. I mean, sorry, not tourist visas, different visas. And those are going to cost you. But I'm not getting into visas because it's going to vary by the individual. Just make sure you look up visas. And we always get into cost of living. Everybody knows that Mexico is generally cheaper, less expensive than America. Um, but if you are planning on going to Mexico and getting a job, like a regular job, you're going to be out of luck. Mainly because the average salary there is around two to $300 a month. And uh, that's way, probably way less than what you're used to spending or making rather, and way less than what you're used to spending. So, and the jobs are gonna go to nationals first. So have a job before you get there, or you know, work for one of the major companies, international companies or something like that, that's gonna bring you into the country. And this probably won't even be an issue if you're being brought into the company with your job, to the country, I'm sorry, with a job. But if you're just trying to quit your job, walking to Mexico tomorrow, yeah, it's not really gonna happen. So just do some research and some due diligence. But again, it's cheap. It's beautiful. It's hot. And there's tacos. I mean, those are all great reasons to move to Mexico. And as I'm finding, cost of living is relative in a lot of countries. And it's really relative on how you want to live. You can live relatively cheap. Or you can live like a king. And living like a king in Mexico will cost you more than, say, living like a king in Southeast Asia. Um, mainly because they realize that people do want to live like kings there. So they're going to charge you a king's rate. It's still going to be cheaper than possibly living upper middle class in America. So keep that in mind. And last but not least, LGBTQI friendly. You know, I went back and forth on this a little bit. Because on the surface, it is very friendly. You can... Uh, get married there and um, actually homosexuality was decriminalized in 1871 those are my research numbers I had to throw that out there um, and so again same-sex marriage is legal there the issue is it's a little bit easier for people who are non-native to be out there uh, versus someone who was born and raised in Mexico who's Mexican uh, you're going to have more of an issue, more of a problem, uh, Catholic Church, guilt, all that stuff like that. So keep that in mind if you're single and you're looking to mingle. That if you meet a local, and if they're not totally out, they may never come totally out. Or they may. Who knows? But there is some stigma there. Very similar to the United States. So don't think you're going to jump into gay Mecca in Mexico unless you're dating expats. And don't do that. Get out of the expect bubble. But anyway, that is Mexico in a nutshell. Great country. And one we're going to go to. That's right. We are going to Mexico. I forgot to throw that out there. So, uh, yeah, we'll be, 
You'll see us there in a few months as we exit Southeast Asia. Anyway, again, I am Cat with Wondering Soup. Subscribe, like, and follow at the blog www.wonderingsoup.com, YouTube, Wondering Soup, and we're also on Instagram, Wondering underscore Soup. We'll see you next week with another country that we're moving to. Peace and love, y'all. Thank you.